Hi, this is a three-week wine kit that I bought in Wilkinson's in Carmarthen yesterday. Um, available in the UK, and I'm sure you can get it online from uh, Wilco. Cabernet Sauvignon, the kit contains everything you need uh, to make an equivalent to six bottles of wine. There's a cardboard box thing with a bag to dispense it out of, but other than that, it's got everything. And of course the instructions down the side and there's some instructions inside with it as well. So all quite easy to go ahead with. Let's have a look. So let's take a look at what's inside. <coughs> um, so I'm really looking forward to having a look at the damage on. Um, you never know when they bring these things back. Sometimes they're unbelievably thin or somehow not up to it. There we go, it's a nice sturdy box. I have actually already been into it if I'm honest. And uh, when you first open it, you can see the damage on in there straight away. And then you find that you've lost the box. But only if you're trying to make a video. Yes, here's the box, right. <laughs> and all the other bits, all the other bits come in this box which sort of packs in next to it like that. And so in the box, let's have a look at what we've got. Siphon tube, it's always handy. If you've made wine before, you'll already have a siphon tube, but if not, who cares? And there it is, look. That looks a real good damage on to me. Mm, I've picked up heavier ones, but it's very sturdy. Look, Muntins, 450 centilitres. Mm -hmm. Quite five litres, but there we are. Six good bottles of wine will come out of that. Well, not six bottles, actually. Six bottles worth in a box like this. And uh, inside the, the box... I'll show you the wine kit in a minute. Inside the box, which you've got to open carefully, because this is actually reusable. I say it's reusable. Um, you get this wine bag, which you, know, you fill up through the nozzle, no doubt. But that's after it's done its thing in the damage John. And then I'll show you when the time comes. I'm not going to do it yet because I'm knack of the cardboard. But there's this, uh, you see that there, yeah. There's this thing here which you poke in a little bit. And then you poke this disc out. And you poke the tap thing out through that so that it sticks out the front. And then you've got yourself a wine box. And uh, the great thing about that, I think, is that um, it's not suddenly oxidised and gone bad uh, by the next day. Because that, that's a bit of a shame. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't always want to drink... Uh, whole bottle of wine, a whole six glasses of wine in one session. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it varies from person to person. Some people could do that, but I can't. It's, uh, it's not my, just not my constitution. Let's look at the other stuff we get with it. Put the box back out of the way. And we get all this stuff. And we also get a wine kit, which I've left somewhere else. So just let me get that a second. Very disorganised at the moment. You can probably hear my washing machine going in the background as well. Right, so what we got all together, let's just change this camera angle the tiniest bit. Okay, now we can see it. So we've got this can. Uh, this can basically contains all the uh, the grape juice extract, really, you know. And um, I don't know, sometimes they, uh, they put some additives in to make it better. But uh, it's quite difficult to, to prize the cap off but in the time on tradition if you've if you've brewed before you'll know but uh when you try to make a video you drop things on the floor and the cap comes in and gets involved as well and all the bits come in this yeah this so uh, this cap which uh comes on top of the wine kit like that and has a cardboard disc with it which we don't seem to need for anything but uh, hang on to it just in case and in there you get this, let me see, wine findings, could be ice in glass, could be bad, I don't know, but it makes, uh, that's how it can be a three week wine kit and still work, because they, they clear it, so we don't need them yet. We've got the wine yeast, which we'll need in a minute, and uh, the wine stabiliser, uh, which I don't think we need yet either, and uh, yeah, Nutrifine, or Nutrifi, I'm not sure you pronounce that, uh, 9.6 grams of that, 5.5 grams of that, and of course, the instructions. And uh, as well as the siphon tube and all that, we get some sterilising stuff, brew cleanse there, Wilco brew cleanse, 500 grams of brewing sugar, that's quite finely powdered, doesn't seem quite as powdered as icing sugar would be, but it's certainly a lot finer than, you know, what, what you buy 
in the shops sugar you buy in the shops is absolutely fine but that's, that's really the best stuff that's come with that and of course we get this cork to go in the top of the demijohn when the time's right and then that can go in there as well and uh, let's move the camera a bit and there it is we put some sterilizing solution in there and well, I'll show you when the time comes but uh, that keeps it all nice and uh, tight airtight <clears throat> it allows the uh, the the wine to breathe as it's forming uh, but it doesn't actually let any air in from the outside so it keeps it all sterile and you've got to keep this mega sterile it's really important because uh, the slightest bit of grime gets in there it actually ferments out and uh, gosh if I've ever drank anything that I've made that was like that I've really regretted it the next day uh, that's all I can say without being too horrible but to that end I'm going to go and sterilize this demijohn before we do anything else um, looks lovely and clean and I can't actually find my demijohn brush, which is what I should use. Um, but it's lovely and clean, so I'm just going to fill it up with some hot water and uh, put some sterilising uh, solution in there as well. Give it a good swirl around and come back and start making this. Now, I don't know if you can see the old demijohn there. You can probably see most of it though. I've got most of it in shot. You can perhaps hear the kettle boiling in the background. Um, I live it the old way here and I haven't got sort of lukewarm water coming out of the taps in a form I can put in this. And tap water isn't really the best thing for doing this, it has sort of warm water. Um, but no, I, I like to use sort of water that's really clean. So I've put some tap water in there, which <laughs> sure is full of fluoride and goodness knows what else. I'd use filtered water if you can really, but uh, never mind, that's going to be fine. It's a cheap wine kit, why not? 20 quid all in by the way from Wilco so I've put some cold water in there up to let me see about there um, just so that the whole thing isn't sort of suddenly uh, overheated and cracks and I'm gonna open up this stuff this brew cleanse um, if you're already into wine making you, you might actually have some tablets or something I mean Campro is, uh, is a very good one and I've got some baby food sterilizer uh, sorry baby equipment sterilizing tablets that I often use as well but uh, for the sake of the video we'll use it in the kit because it, it says it's got everything you need so uh, I'll take them at their word and do that and I'm delighted to note <laughs> that that, oh I've spilled a tiny bit there I want four heaped teaspoons in this to the gallon oh should we use the funnel really, oh I forgot that lesson I haven't used damage on for ages Let's do them in half. That's two and a half. Three. Three and a half. Four. And there, my friends, is the advantage of using it in tablet form. Costs a tiny bit more, but uh, definitely a more accurate result. Never mind. Store that in a cool, dry place. That's what we've got to do. We want to get this a good sluice round to get it dissolving. It's best actually to put this in and then add the water on top of it. But I forgot that. And uh, this kit is certainly aimed at the novice. So they're going to have to get it right. Give that a good swirl. That's dissolving nicely in there. But it's really going to kick when I put the hot water in when the kettle boils in a tick. And the kettle's just coming up to the boil. I don't know if you can hear it there. Good old whistling kettle on a gas stove. Nice and British, I can have a cup of tea as well, but, oh dear, there's, a, there's always a cat when you've got a red hot kettle, isn't there? <laughs> okay, right, so here is my kettle, I'm sorry my kettle is so grotty, I'm going to try and drop that in there without too much direct contact with the glass. That's going straight in on top of stone cold water. It's autumn here in West Wales, UK, so the cold water doesn't come out of the taps. Anything other than stone cold. Right, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to add some more to that because it's got to be a gallon, but I don't want, to, don't want the whole thing boiling. That's good and hot. So I'll add some more to that and give it a swirl. Right, so I gave that a good swirl around before I topped it up and it's still nice and warm to the touch, yeah, that, that's doing its job nicely. 
Uh, proprietary uh, cleansing stuff is really good. Now we have to sterilise everything that's going to be used. Actually I think, as far as I know, except the cardboard box and the bag, but we don't need that for another sort of week, 10 days yet. What we do need to sterilise is this, because uh, this and the, uh, the, pla the rubber cork actually um, are going to have to go straight in the top of the damage on as soon as we've done the work of setting it up. Uh, now, this says it's a complete kit, and I've tried to do it without uh, using anything that isn't in the kit. I guess you could sterilise this in this can, maybe. You know, you wouldn't get the whole thing in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got this jug, which didn't come with a kit. Oh, that'll nearly sterilise it, won't it? Goodness, so I'll make up some sterilising solution in this and uh, get that sterilised as well now. So in the end, I did it that way. Um, perhaps I'm being overzealous there, actually, because they do say that everything you actually need is in the kit. Um, and I may not have actually needed to sterilise that thing as thoroughly as I have, the, the airlock I'm talking about, the, the fermentation lock here. Um, because when you actually use the thing, it's only what's on the inside of it that matters. And I could have just put a little bit of solution in there. But there we are. We live and learn. I first did this. When I was about 21, I lived in a caravan. And uh, then I made this fascinating discovery that uh, anyone who's ever done homebrew will, uh, will tell you about. And which you'll find out if you do this, if you've uh, never brewed for yourself before. Um, although, of course, you know, the first time of a thing, things can go wrong. Which is why it's good to do it with a proprietary, proprietary kit, actually. Not much goes wrong with a kit. <coughs> Excuse me, but one of the things that can go wrong with this making any kind of homebrew from a kit is not lack of alcohol. Um, this can be stunningly strong stuff. And we will see, I intend to get this ready in time for um, about three weeks before Christmas, so you can make yourself one for Christmas if, if that's what you want to do. Okay, so now we're going to leave all this for 10 minutes, then come back, tip it out and crack on. So there, we've got this far, or I've got this far anyway. Everything's sterilised. Sounds a bit of a thrash, but it's nothing to worry about. I probably spend a lot more time talking there than, than actually doing anything. It's a fairly quick thing to do. You just, you know, get, get your warm water in there, swirl it around with the sterilising stuff or sterilising tablets if you're going to use them. Uh, stand it for about 10 minutes, rinse it off and Bob's your uncle. And uh, of course, it's worth saving a little bit of the sterilised water to go in there because that that, uh, that, that means that as the, uh, the mixture ferments in here and gives off the gas, the gas can escape so the damage on doesn't explode which is always good because they're uh, eight quid these things, not cheap. Um, so the, then the gas can escape but no air and no sort of viruses or yeasts out of the air or anything can get in because uh, that would change it, that would spoil it rather. Uh, so I fitted this straight into the cork, and I put the cork straight into the top immediately that I'd finished um, sterilising it all. Now then, I've been trying to do this only using the kit, but I'm afraid it hasn't actually got enough stuff in it. Well, not, it's got nearly everything, but it does need a funnel or something. Uh, I'm actually going to use a mixing jug because otherwise... Uh, it's not just the mess. I mean, it would make a terrible mess because it's Cabernet Sauvignon sort of red grape juice in here which would really make a terrible mess, but um, it, it's more that there won't be enough in the demijohn to actually make the recipe as it's supposed to be, if we do it that way. Uh, so you could use a funnel. Uh, I suppose most people have either got a funnel or a jug, you know, so it's not the end of the world. I'm actually going to use a measuring jug. Uh, so I'm going to go in there now, which way shall we? You can do them either way with this thing. I think we'll go in the top. It's a little bit safer that way, usually. Another way you could do this is uh, with a very basic old fashioned and uh, still sort of used as military can opener where you just sort of poke in the front and poke in the back and then it would come out in a nice steady stream. Um, but we've got to use this jug in a minute to add 1.8 litres of cold water and I think we might as well use it now to add this. Let's see. Oh, it's not as gloopy as some of these things are. Sometimes it's thicker than this, but uh, look, so it's going to come out reasonably easily. And there's, there's quite a bit left in the tin there, so I'm going to run that under the tap a minute. And give it a swirl. It's 
So there we are, giving it a good swirl. I wouldn't use boiling water for this, by the way, it uh, burns your fingers, but this seems to be a cold water kit, generally speaking. Um, and it's going to have to be in a warm place, really, all the time it's fermenting, certainly to get it going. It says minimum of uh, 20, 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees C. And that's nothing like that at the moment. So let's put that carefully there. And pour it in ever so carefully into the dummy John. This is when it starts becoming a wine kit rather than just a load of stuff in tins and packets. I should get the thing going now. So we've got the juice in there. If you've got a plastic spoon, right, it's quite good to stir this all up in a demi John. They don't supply one. I've got one, but I've got various things that I'm, I'm not using because I want to do this review in such a way that you know, if you've never never come near a wine kit or any wine making experience or anything before, you will be able to do it because you can with these kits, you know. The first thing I ever made was home brewed beer. And I really wanted to sort of learn it the connoisseur way. And I spent quite a bit of money buying this kit that had all the hops and, and the barley with it and boiling the barley up and stinking everything out. I'm not entirely sure it was worth it. It was good beer, but there's quicker and easier ways. And these canned kits are really good. Uh, it is all genuine stuff in the cans, as far as I know. Right, so... We've got the contents of the can into the sterilised glass demijohn. 1.8 litres of cold water coming up and 450 grams of brewing sugar, which I guess is this. It says on the box it's 500. Well, dear, oh dear, if it's a bit more, it might have a bit more alcohol in, so that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Mm. Mm -mm. There isn't a pair of scissors in the kit, so I'm using my good old teeth. Lovely and hygienic. I'm going to put, actually, put, it says to put the cold water in, but experience suggests to me it's going to be better to put the brewing sugar in now. Because then, whoops, be careful to make sure it all goes in there. It's quite a slow process, actually. Something else a funnel would be good for. Okay, that's got that in there. I just I cut a very small corner off the edge of the sachet so it poured in without spilling everywhere. I did spill a bit on the outside, but who cares? Mmm, it's really tasty. Mm -mm. I'm liking the flavour of this already, and it's not even wine yet. Oh, I thought that was on the inside, but no, it's on the outside. Oh dear, right, let's give that a swirl. Well, I hope there was five, uh, 500 grams in there, not 450, because I'm sure I've spilled that. Uh, Best part of an ounce and a half of the stuff there. But there we are, we'll vacuum that up later. That is why God made vacuum cleaners now. We want 1.8 litres of cold water. So, this thing holds a litre. And it's got the final residue from the fruit concentrate can in it as well. So nice and gentle. And once that goes in, that's knocking the sugar off the edge of the Demi John neck because it's kind of stuck on there a bit. When well, we've done this, which is one litre, we'll need 0.8 litres. I'm just using ordinary tap water for this. And people got all sorts of concerns about tap water, and I don't blame them actually. I've got a water filter. Um, which I use for pretty much everything, but I'm reviewing a kit, so I'm just using the kit and the good old council pop, the old tap water. So there is 800 millilitres there, so this brings it to 1.8 litres of water, plus of course the concentrate, but she's only going to be about half full with this in, maybe a little bit over that. 
But after this, it takes about three days for this to thoroughly activate. And it's got to stay in a warm place. There, that's good. And that's knocked all the surplus sugar off the neck into it as well, which is good. So I didn't manage to get it all in, but it, it, with these recipes, any kind of recipe really, you want to get the full amount in there if you can. Makes a difference to the flavour and uh, with this kind of thing it can make all the difference because it's a three week wine so you want to give it the best possible start, you know. Right, so we've got that far. I've just got to swirl this a bit more it says. I'll just put my hand over the end there because it does have a way of suddenly glooping out of these things. So we want that sugar thoroughly mixed up. Does say swirl it gently, so I'm not going to go any madder than that. So now we want the first sachet, which is the wine yeast, sachet A, five and a half grams. And again, since there's no funnel, I'm just going to take a corner off the packet like that. Open it up a little bit with my fingernails, make sure spotlessly clean. I'm not joking, I did the washing up before I started on this because, uh, you know, it's not half measures with cleanliness when you're brewing, it's, it's vitally important, you know. Uh, even the old hillbilly guys uh, out, out in the States who used to make the moonshine, try and keep it as clean as they could, you know. And that stuff was rough enough anyway, but any germs, any dirt, anything in it bacteria wise, uh, it, it, is, it is very simply bound to ferment out and become kind of a thousand times more potent than it was before. I want to make sure I've got all this yeast out, but mm, it's not the easiest sachet, frankly. There's a bit jammed in there. What are we doing there? Let's have to keep going at it. I think that's got it. I'm going to look inside just in case. Oh, there's a fair bit in there, okay. Just straighten that out a bit. Tap it in, don't want too much uh, contact with your fingers, if at all possible. And the Nutrifine B sachet as well. Okay, before we shake it. So sachet B, 9.6 grams of Nutrifine. Uh, this would be a yeast nutrient, it'll help the yeast to do its work. It'll certainly get it working quicker, it's a kind of a catalyst, or part of the three week wine kit thing. But uh, the yeast does a lot better, generally speaking. I mean, people who... I've oh spent about 18 months once uh, making elderflower wine, and I, I put some yeast nutrient in at the beginning. And it came out lovely, it did. But on the strong side... So what now, I guess we swirl it to do here. Yep, shake the dummy John gently, and then seal with the bung and airlock. And that will be it for today. Probably shaking that a bit too ungently, but there we are, I reckon. That's pretty good. So we'll put this in, and it may start bubbling. I hope it does. And look. I don't know if you can see that, but already, let's position the camera. First, we'll come down a bit. And up and in a bit. And we'll come right over like this. Move it around a bit more. <laughs> and down a bit, it goes on and on. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but when we started off... This one was full. Oh, it popped one there, look. This one was full and this one was full. And it's, I can see it doing it now. As the gas forms, it's pushing that bubble down. You can just make it out there. It's not that easy to see, but see the bubble from this side gets longer and longer. And in a second, it'll pop round under the bottom and then it'll have, uh, well, it'll be able to escape out of this then and take the, uh, take the top off that. And it can, it's, it's taking ages now, isn't it? <laughs> it does take a while to get going, but you get your first few bubbles straight away. Anyway, I dare say you get the impression it has actually pushed one bubble so far. I'm quite pleased with it. Oh, gosh, it's about to go through. Right, let's just stand here and watch this for a teeny bit longer. 
because it's really fascinating. I mean, this, this, right, this is the fun of making your own drinks or making your own anything, really. You actually get to see the process, uh, not just the participation, but to actually plan it yourself. Because, as, oh, there's one gone. Uh, as you can see, even though it's a kit and it comes with everything, uh, there's a little bit of, you know, working things out using your noggin. Uh, not an awful lot of, of uh, you know, mental working out or anything. It is all there supplied in just the right quantities. I think it's great value. Anyway, right, let's just focus down a bit on that. Now, look at that beautiful, cool, blood red grape, grape juice there. And it is still grape juice. But it's got a fine head on it already as it starts to produce the, um, well, as it starts to have the reaction. And that will leave us with alcohol in here. But uh, we don't top it up to the top for about another three days yet. I'm going to put it in a warm place by the fire. And that is just about that for part one. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave me a like, maybe subscribe if you like, and then you will find out when part two comes out, which should be about three days from now. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.